In this video, I'm going to show you how to install a Mr. Cool DIY ductless mini split yourself. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh. The channel's all about DIY to save a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask in return for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get this started. The unit I'm going to be installing is a 36,000 BTU 18 sear rating and I have the outside condenser that I'm going to show you as well. This is the inside unit and it's the air handler and Mr. Cool sent me all the product for this video so they are sponsoring it but I actually contacted them when I was wanting to purchase a Mr. Cool unit and they ended up sponsoring this video which I want to say thank you Mr. Cool for that and I'll put a link in the description below to their website along with other links to their products. So the first thing I'm going to do is unpackage the units, so let's get started. When it came to unpackaging the unit, the unit was tightly packaged and easy to unpackage because everything was in one tight, neat space. And then once you opened up the top of the boxes, everything just came out nice and smooth and unwrapped very easily. I'm now going to build a concrete slab to set the outside unit on. I first tamp the ground and then build a square box out of two by fours. That's 36 by 20. Leveled it up, then used stakes to secure it, and then took high strength concrete mix that are 80 pound bags it took four of them mixed them up in a wheelbarrow and then poured it inside of the form and then after i did that i took a rake to level out the concrete and then came back later that night after it set up a little bit more than what it was when i first poured it and used a broom to give it a quick broom finish and then on the following day i removed the form boards and i had a nice concrete slab before you're able to get your mr cool mini split up and running you must first install a disconnect beside your condenser or the outdoor unit and the reason why that is because that's where all your power is going to come from for the unit so with that being said you can hire a professional electrician and that's what I highly recommend you do. Or in my case, what I'm gonna do is I pull the proper permits and I'm gonna wire it myself. And I've wired many houses in the past for myself so I have plenty of experience with that. So I show how to wire in the breaker into this panel and the disconnect itself. But I'm gonna install the mini split first and save that footage for towards the end of the video because most people's gonna hire that part out. So if you wanna to jump to that part, check out the timestamps below and jump to the electrical installation. The unit that I'm gonna be installing can do up to 1500 square feet. So I'm actually gonna be heating and cooling this garage. So I'm gonna mount this unit right here towards the center of this opening between the windows. And this is more towards the working side of my garage or shop. And this side is gonna be more for where I'm gonna park a vehicle. So it's actually gonna be more towards the side of the workshop. So this Mr. Cool unit is really amazing in a sense that it's very DIY friendly. It came with this template that I'm gonna to use to level up and place on the wall before I drill the hole through for the line set and the wiring. I'm gonna measure down about 14 inches to the top of the template. And then, as you can see, because of these drywall screws, we know there's a stud here, here, and here. And I need to make sure that the bracket is gonna be placed into studs. I like that idea. Some would use drywall anchors, but I'm a fan of making sure I hit a stud. So I'm first gonna line this up to where this is gonna be hitting the stud. And after I do that, I'm going to take a simple roofing nail and then we're gonna place it right through where the screw is gonna be in the bracket. And it's gonna hold that template. And now I'm gonna take my level. And then I'm gonna level up the template, make sure we're really good because that's a really important concept is to make sure this air handler is nice and level because there is a pan that catches condensation, then it's gonna go out the hose, so you need to make sure your unit's setting level. So that should get us in the ballpark there. And then we're gonna hit a stud right here. So tacking this template on with the drywall screws also marks where we need to place our screws in to hold the bracket when we get to that point. I'm going to use the supplied hole saw that came with this kit. This is a three and a half inch hole saw. And right here on the template indicates where the pipe hole needs to go for our line set and the wiring. 
So I'm now just going to drill out right in the center. I'm now placed on a long drill bit and I'm going to drill through here as a pilot hole to the exterior because I got vinyl siding. I want to make sure I drill from the outside in so that way I don't risk messing up the siding. And make sure you drop just a little bit for that condensation hose to be able to drain properly. So we need to make sure there's a slight slope down so we got to go down just a little bit lower than what this hole is. Alright now we're going to drill from the outside in. Here's our pilot hole. We're just going to use that to drill into the inside. As you can see, we got a nice clean hole directly through the wall. Now it's time to install the bracket to hold the air handler. And the bracket is stored on the unit for shipping purposes. And all I got to do is take out this Phillips screw here and take it off before I install it. I'm now going to remove the drywall nails or roofing nails that I use to hold the template onto the wall. And when I take this off, as you can see, the holes is gonna mark where the screw should go. And also, I'm gonna go ahead and take the bracket, and I'm gonna be using screws that I got. I got construction screws, and these are longer than what you should use because if there's a wire going through the wall, you could hit a wire. These are three inches long. So with that being said, you typically want to use something that's about an inch and a half, but I know there's no wires going through here because I just built this building. So I'm going to hold this up into place and then I'm going to anchor it using the holes that we made onto the wall. And I'm actually going to level this up after I place the first screw in. All right, and I'll take that level. Also, you made sure I used washers when I placed the screws in here to hold it into place. I'm now going to place one more screw here on the stud that's more towards the center. Now the bracket is secured. I'm now going to place this sleeve through that hole and then we're going to mark the length in which it needs cut down to in order to fit perfectly to the exterior. So if you're going to have a 2x4 wall here, you're clearly going to have to cut a good bit off this tubing. I'm now going to take a pencil and mark where it needs cut back to in order to cut it to length. Here's the mark we made and as you can see there's rings that you can cut down through to make it easy. I'm just going to take my sawzall and cut right down through that ring. Now we're cut to length. I'm now going to slide this sleeve directly through that hole now that we're cut the length. And then while that's placed through the hole, I'm going to go on the outside and address that. I'm now going to take this trim cover and place into that sleeve. As you can see, it gives it a nice finished look. In order to prepare the air handler to be installed onto that bracket, I must first pull this line set out towards a 90 degree angle away from the unit. So I'm just going to do that nice and slow and easy and try not to damage this line set. And now I need to make sure this condensation tubing is placed out here as well. And I'm going to cut the wrap off of the wiring so it's going to be ready to go as well. I'm now going to unravel the wire. All right, we're going to begin by placing the wire right through that hole and then the line set after that. And then after that, we need to make sure our condensation tube is on the bottom of the opening. Looking back at it, it would have been better to have wrapped the condensation tubing and the line set together before sliding it through the hole with the supplied wrap that came with the kit. Then we're going to hook it right onto the top bracket the top of the bracket. Okay. And then we're going to slide it down into place for it to click into place. Here we go. We felt it click in nicely. And that's all there is to installing the air handler on the inside. Now let's go to the outside. Now that our line sets through the wall, I'm actually going to take what's called quad. This is an excellent sealant for anything where there is siding or anything exterior. So I'm going to actually peel this back a little bit 
put a good bead around this to help seal the weather out. All right, I'm now gonna use a little spray foam to spray foam the hole to seal out any weather. I'm now gonna set the outside condenser onto the concrete pad that we built, and then we'll install the line sets. Mr. Cool sent four rubber pads, and I'm gonna place these under each corner of the feet, so that way it just helps with a little bit of the vibration and whatnot. I'm now gonna bend these lines down towards the unit Try to go directly straight down. Now just gonna get a rough measurement of how much line I need to unroll from the coil. If we take a measurement here, as long as we unroll at least four foot, we should have plenty to get down to where it connects into the unit. If you need to know the length of the line set, the line set that is included is a 25 foot long pre-charged copper line set. So you will have enough distance to go into a second story if you need to. Now time to address the line set. This is where the true magic happens when dealing with the Mr. Cool DIY system because these lines are already pre-charged. So that way we don't have to get an HVAC technician or anybody like that out here in order to install our unit ourselves. So again, this is the key to being able to install these units yourself. So first thing we need to do is get this end that has the insulation that's peeled down from it a little bit. And we're gonna unroll the amount that we need in order to make it to the unit to where it connects into. I'm simply just going to lay these lines flat onto the floor in order to flex them out straight like so. And then we're gonna unspool enough to get down to the unit. So that should be about right there. So that should be plenty. And we're gonna keep this spooled up for now. I'm now gonna remove the cap off the end of the lines. And we're gonna do that to these lines as well. And we're now gonna start by hand tightening the line set onto the line set coming out of the air handler. We're now gonna take a adjustable wrench and tighten this up for now until we feel some resistance. Now that we got resistance, we're going to be sure to hold the other line set as we tighten up this line. And in a perfect world, you would torque these down the specs, but most DIYers won't have any way to torque these down to specs unless they buy the tool. Just so you know, so we're gonna do the same to this line. All right, now we got these connections made. We're gonna connect these lines to the unit now. I'm now gonna remove this cover to be able to access these stop valves. So I'm just gonna take a Phillips screwdriver or drill and remove those. I'm now gonna flex the lines that I have coiled up here towards these stop valves. I'm now gonna remove the covers off the valves. And we're simply gonna make our connections. I'm going to remove the caps off each one of these valves. I'm going to use the Allen wrench that was provided by Mr. Cool and I'm just going to place the Allen wrench into the Allen key and then loosen up and now you'll hear the unit charging and we're going to want to loosen up the Allen screw until it is all the way out. Then we'll do the same to this one. I'm now gonna replace the caps. I'm now gonna take a mixture of soapy water and spray the joints and look for bubbling 
to make sure there are no leaks. Now that I know there are no leaks, I'm gonna replace the cover. We're now gonna wrap the rest of this covering over the pipes. I'm now gonna test these connections with soapy water as well to look for leaks. And we're looking for bubbling here and looks good. I'm now gonna wrap each one of the connections with this sound dampening tape that they sent. So it's just gonna peel and stick around both connections. I'm now gonna finish insulating the line set with the provided insulation. I'm now gonna take the provided condensation tubing and hook it to the tubing that's coming out of the unit. I'm now gonna cut the condensation tubing down to the ground and cut what's remaining off. Using the rolls of wrap that were provided by Mr. Cool, I'm gonna start here at the bottom of the line set and wrap the wire and the line set together till we get up to the top to where it exits the wall. And I'm also gonna use Gorilla Tape that's all weather to assist in this operation. Like I mentioned earlier, I already installed the disconnect in the breaker and the whip. And if you want to jump to that part of the video, check out the timestamps below. And that way you'll understand more of what was involved before hooking up the wiring to the Mr. Cool condenser. Before working on the electrical, be sure to locate the breaker and turn it off that is powering the disconnect and verify there is no power to the disconnect. And or you could disconnect the power from the actual disconnect itself. Either way, verify the power is off. In order to install the wiring, I must first remove this panel in order to get to where we got to land the wires. I must first connect the wire that's coming from the air handler and connect the whip to the cover. I'm first gonna take the lock nut off the wire. Then I'm gonna fish it right up through this hole and reinstall the lock nut. Tighten that down really well. Because my whip is three quarter, I do have to bore out this hole a little bit in order to get this three quarter inch through it. Now a half inch would work perfect, but my whip just happened to be three quarters inch. This was not supplied by Mr. Cool. This is one I bought myself. I'm gonna locate the green ground screw here and remove it. I'm now gonna place that green ground wire into where that screw was removed from. I'm now gonna install the remaining wires onto the terminals that correspond with the numbers. Locate the wire that's labeled with a one, which is this red wire. As you can see, there's a one here on the side. I'm gonna slide back this cover on the end of it. And I'm now gonna place it right into that terminal. Now two, which is the white wire, the same thing. We're gonna land it onto the two. And then the last one, which is the black, which is labeled three, goes to the three. I'm now gonna land the wires from the whip onto the terminals. I'm gonna do the black to the L1, the red to the L2, and then the green ground to the ground terminal. In order to land the wires, I first cut them the length and then I stripped off about 3 8 inch of the sheathing and then installed them into the terminal. Now that we made all of our connections, I'm gonna replace the cover onto the box. Oftentimes it can be challenging to install the cover. So what I like to do is tuck the wires in as I place the cover on and then tighten up the screws. I'm now gonna install the line guard. This is a cover that goes over the line set and it's gonna help protect against sun and weather and those lines will last many, many years when they're protected. So I'm gonna show you what comes in the box. As you can see, there's many different fittings for many different situations. Here is the part that's gonna go over the bulk of the line set. This is the back 
part that goes onto the building. And then this will snap over. And then we also got couplings and we got a hub that's gonna go over the top to where the lines come out of the building. So there's many things here. There are also zip ties and other accessories such as an elbow. So we're gonna go ahead and install what we need for our system. I'm gonna first begin by placing this piece under the line set and screwing it right to the building. We're now gonna install this piece for the long part and I'm gonna place it right against the wall and then I'm gonna key off the window, just make sure we got the same reveal and I know the window's level. I'm now gonna install the bottom to where the lines will exit the cover, right there. I'm now gonna slide these zip tie clips down the slot of the straight piece and then take a zip tie, zip tie the line set back to the building. As you can see, it zip tied nicely to the back of that cover. I'm first gonna begin by installing the straight cover over the straight piece. And now I'm going to install the boot cover. And lastly, I'm going to install the cover over the top. Now, as you can see, the unit has a nice, clean, professional look, and that is a beautiful DIY job complete. I'm now at the moment we all have been waiting for. I'm going to come over here to the panel box, locate the breaker that's going to power the mini split, and we're going to kick it on. And I heard a beep, so it sounds like the system is fired up. So let's go check it out. I have the remote that was supplied by Mr. Cool for the unit. I'm now going to hit the power button to power on the unit. And if you take a look, as you can see, we got a light on and it's set to 75 degrees. And I'm gonna crank the heat up all the way to make sure it's working properly. We're gonna give that a minute to start heating. Something I had to mention that I was very impressed with is just how quiet this outdoor unit is. I'm sitting probably about three feet away from it and it is so quiet. I can definitely hear the wind blowing and whatnot in the background. Definitely an amazing part of this unit that I had to mention. While I'm out here, I also wanted to mention there are a few different options when it comes to the pad to place your unit on. One is the concrete pad that you see me install already. Two would be brackets that attach to your building and the unit would actually set on it. And then three, there's a PVC pad that they make that the unit can sit on. You just level it up. But me personally, I've always tried to set my units on concrete slabs whenever I build something. It's probably the superior option in my opinion, but the brackets on the building is also a really good option but you're gonna to have to address your situation for your building. I have had this unit running now for a whole hour, and I must say, it is much warmer in this garage, and I actually haven't even finished insulating the upstairs yet, and it's even windy outside, so I'm pretty impressed it's gotten much warmer at all. But with that being said, something I've noticed right off the bat with this inside unit is it's almost just like the outside unit as far as being quiet. I have this thing set on high right now. I feel tons of air blowing out and it's still relatively quiet. And I can also hit the fan icon on the remote and turn it down. So we'll turn it to low. So we idled down to low right there. And with it on low, I can hardly hear it at all, but I can definitely feel a little bit of air coming out of it. And then we can also set this on medium and you're gonna hear it kick up more, and then high is where it was, and then we can go to auto, and it'll adjust accordingly. So that's just different ideas when it comes to the fan options and the sound level. So now let's switch this over to the cold setting, just so we make sure it works. I now set this on the cool mode, and I have it set on 62. I definitely tell cooler air is coming out, 
But the thing is, right now it's only 55 degrees in this building because it's winter time at this time. I've had this unit running for a little while to warm it up. So I probably can't get a true test on the AC until summertime. So stay tuned for a little update on that later on this summer. Here are some additional items that was sent with the kit. Here is a pack of sealing clay. Instead of using spray foam in the pipe that went through the wall, I could have used this sealing clay, but I like spray foam better. And then they sent a mounting bracket for the remote, which I'll put that on after the drywall is painted. They have a connector for your condensation tubing if you need one, which I didn't need it. And I got a filter that's going to go in the unit here for the air. And then I got a USB AC controller that's for connecting the unit to Wi-Fi. And then you can download the app to control the unit. So I'm going to install these two things now. I'm first going to open up the box that has the controller in it. And it looks like I've got literature here. And right here is the USB controller that we're gonna plug into the unit. In order to open up the unit to install these items, all we gotta do is grab the sides, lift up, and then we can access the inside of the unit. And right here is where that controller gets plugged into. So we're just gonna plug in that USB right here. And after further inspection, this filter will not go in my unit. I could not find the spot to where the instruction shows it goes. And it says that this is not to be used on all models. So I assume this model does not require this small filter. I downloaded the Mr. Cool app and it's going to load up here. And surprisingly, I had Wi-Fi clear out here to this workshop. So this garage is close enough to be able to accept the Wi-Fi signal but I'm actually going to put a router in here eventually. But if we take a look here, as you can see, there's my unit. And if we tap on it, well, first, if you look right here is the temperature on the inside. And if we take a look at the interface, very nice. We're set on 86. So let's just experiment. If we look up here in the top corner, as you can see, we're set at 86. But if we come back to the app, let's turn it down to, let's say, 80. If we take a look up here, we are already set to 80. So it really works quick. And then on the app, there's some more settings. We can do the position of the fan. We can adjust the fins of it, which is pretty cool. And we can do some other things from the app, such as clearly change whatever mode we want on. And we can do different fan settings. Um, all of that straight from the app. Very cool, very responsive, nice feature Mr. Cool offers. When it comes to the warranty on this unit, as you can see, this has a limited lifetime warranty on the compressor, which is very impressive. Then we got a seven years unit replacement warranty, and then we got a five years part warranty, which is very awesome. And if we take a look down here, I noticed this line that says, State certified or licensed HVAC contractor is not required for warranty on the do-it-yourself series. That is what I installed here. So if you do it yourself and it is the DIY series, you are covered under this warranty, which is very impressive. Another thing that's very important to note about the warranty, it says in order to qualify for the limited lifetime compressor warranty, the product must be registered by the original owner and they must be enrolled in the Mr. Cool Care program at the following website. So you need to register here for the full warranty. Because the max amps of my mini split can take up to 35 amps, I got 8-2 wire that's going to be ran to the unit. And now with that being said, I need a 35 amp breaker to handle the max amps the unit can take. So I'm going to install this into the panel box, secure it to the panel using a three quarter inch Remex connector, run my 2 wire over to the disconnect, and I'm going to staple it using three quarter inch staples, and then I'm going to secure it to the disconnect using a three quarter inch Remex connector. And this disconnect can, is rated for up to 60 amps, so we're well within that. It's a non-fusible pull-out version, and this one can be found in my links in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself. I'm going to open up the disconnect and install the 3 quarter inch Romex connector. 
right here is the inside and now I need to come through the back of this since I'm mounting this to the wall so I'm going to go ahead and knock out this knockout here and also it looks like I could actually knock out the center knockout either one of these are fine for this three quarter inch Romex connector in order to knock it out I'm just going to use a punch and a hammer and then tap out that knockout And I'm now going to finish this off with my linemans. And now in order to install the Romex connector, it's very simple. This is going to be fished in from the back like so. And then I'm going to install the lock nut onto the Romex connector. All right. And that's all there is to installing the Romex connector. And now let's go install the wire. I'm now going to unroll the roll of 8-2 wire and then run it from this sub panel over to where the disconnect is going to be on the other side of that wall. It's back there in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this and then go up into the floor joist and then go down to where the disconnect is going to be. I'm now going to drill a hole right through this top plate in order to bring the 8-2 wire down to the disconnect. I now got to drill a hole through the wall for the 8-2 wire to exit the building. And with that being said, if you take a look at the back of the disconnect, that Romex connector protrudes out the back. So I got to cut the sheathing out in order to compensate for that. So in order to mark the center and exactly where it needs cut out, if you hold up where the holes are on the disconnect, I have it setting right here in order to mount it correctly. So I'm going to make a mark on the back of the wall for the exact center. And then I'm just going to drive a nail right here to mark it. And then that's going to give me an area to drill in through that sheathing. I'm now going to knock the nail back through the wall and then drill it out with the two inch hole saw. And if I didn't have that Romex connector and the siding was on, I wouldn't have to do this. I could just drill it out with the three quarter inch drill bit. But because as you can see there's no siding to space it away from the sheathing, I had to do this for now. I'm now going to fish that 8-2 wire through this hole. I'm now going to open up the disconnect and fish it through that Romex connector. Since I got plenty of wire, I'll leave plenty of wire hanging out here. And now I'm going to tighten up that Romex connector here on the back of the disconnect. Now with that wire secured to the disconnect, I'm just going to hold it up into place and then pop the screws to secure it to the building. And now because I got to take this off when I get the siding here, I'm going to just put this on here. It doesn't have to be perfectly plumb for now. And I'm just going to anchor it to hold it until then. Now that this is roughed in, I'm going to place the cover back on until it's time to install the mini split. Something I'd like to mention is since I attached the disconnect to the sheathing, since then I installed the siding and I placed a mounting block in behind this in order to secure it and make it look good to the vinyl siding. So I wanted to point that out, but the installation to the block is the same as it was to the sheathing. I'm now going to take three quarter inch wire staples and I got to secure this wire within 12 inches of that box. So this block is totally perfect. And then after I secure it here, I got to put a staple every four foot until I get to the panel. I now got the 8-2 wire to the sub panel and I'm now going to wire up the breaker. Now, with that being said, I pulled the proper permit so I can wire this up myself. So that's something that you might want to hire a professional electrician to do. Definitely hire a professional if you're not comfortable with doing your own electrical. I'm now going to make sure I got the main breaker kicked to the off position. Now even though that's kicked off, the lugs underneath these lug covers are still hot. So you definitely need to make sure to watch for that. And I try not to make it a habit of touching this metal here because that's whenever the breaker's on live, but I still try not to make it a habit, even though right now it's off. So I'm now gonna install a three quarter inch Romex connector in the top of this panel. I have a knockout right here that's for the three quarter inch Romex connector. So I'm gonna take my punch and knock it out. I'm now gonna grab it with my needle nose and work it back and forth until it comes all the way out. 
I'm now going to install the Romex connector. I'm going to place it down through that hole, then take the lock nut and thread it on to it. I'm now going to fish the 8 2 wire down through the top plate of this wall and then down into that Romex connector. I'm now going to secure using the three inch staples, the wire to this block and that block and it has to be secured within 12 inches in my area. I'm now going to tighten up that Romex connector. Because this wire has to be able to curl around here and land in this ground bar, I'm going to go ahead and tuck this in about where it's going to be installed, then turn around and then I'm going to cut the length off I'm now going to take my utility knife and strip the sheathing off. I'm just going to go over this jacket really lightly. I'm now going to take the paper off this bare copper wire. I'm now going to land this ground wire into this ground bar. And because this is a sub panel, you do not mix the neutrals and grounds. So with that being said, they're separate. Right here's the ground bar and over here are the neutral bars. I'm going to tuck my ground wire nice and neat behind the other wires. I'm now going to land this right here onto the ground bar. I'm now going to tighten that screw terminal onto that ground wire. I'm now going to install this 35 amp double pole breaker that's going to give us 240 volts. And in order to install it, I'm first just going to clip it right into place first. And I'm now going to take the black and the white wires and just flex them right in towards where it's going to be installed. So I'm going to hold these wires back and then bend them accordingly, just like so. And as you can see, these need clipped off about right here in order to enter into those terminals. I'm now going to remove about a half inch of this sheathing off the end of the black and the white wire. And because this white wire is typically a neutral wire, and in this case it's going to be a hot wire, so with that being said, I'm going to have to label it with black tape in order to indicate that it's actually a wire that's going to be hot. I'm now going to remove that breaker, and after we remove it, if you take a look at the back or the side of the breaker, as you can see, it needs torque down to 45 pounds wherever you land these wires, which are these two terminals. And it doesn't matter if the black wire goes to the top or bottom or the white goes to the top or bottom. Either one is fine. So I'm going to just place this right here into that terminal and then take my torque screwdriver and then torque it down to 45 pounds. So I'm going to tighten it down until my screwdriver clicks. All right, you just heard it click there. So an important thing to do because this is stranded, meaning there's multiple wires make one, we're gonna wiggle it back and forth a few times and then we're gonna tighten it down again. And then we're gonna do it another time. All right, I like to do it at least three times. Now we're gonna install this wire into this terminal using that exact same method. All right, so now that they're wiggled and torqued down, we're going to place it back into the panel. And that's all there is to connecting the breaker. I'm now going to open up my panel box cover and label 14 and 16, these two spaces, they're right beside each other. That's where we just installed that double pole breaker. I'm going to label that mini split. And now I'm going to take my pair of linemen and break out these two spaces in order to accommodate the new breaker. I'm now going to reinstall the panel box cover. I'm now going to wire the disconnect. And now the disconnect has the 8-2 wire going to it. So in return, I had to get an 8-2 whip. And the 8-2 whip and the 8-2 wire going to disconnect can handle up to 40 amps. And because this unit requires 35 amps, I had to use 8-2 wire. 
So now I'm going to show you how to wire the disconnect. When I open up the disconnect, I'm going to remove this portion of it that is the actual part that disconnects the power and take off this cover. And now, as you can see, we got our 8-2 wire here. If we look at the labeling here, we have line and line. So the line side is the wire coming from the breaker. So the load side, which are these two lugs, are going to be the whip. So the whip is what's going over to the condenser or the outside unit. And then again, the line side is where this wire is going to land, which is going to the breaker. So I'm first going to cut this to length and strip the wire. And because this will act as a hot wire, even though it's labeled like a neutral, I'm going to label this with black electrical tape to indicate that it is a hot wire. The grounds will be connected here at this ground bar. In order to make the length, I'm going to flex up the wire and then cut it to length. I'm now going to back out this ground screw and land my ground here. I'm now going to place this black wire on this line lug, and it can be in this lug or this lug, just as long as it's a line wire. Now we'll tighten that down. And then after it's tightened, wiggle it just a little bit, and then re-tighten it a couple times. Now we're going to do the same to this wire. I'm now going to install the whip. And in order to install this, I need to knock the knockout three quarter inch size to go into the unit. Now when I wire this, I'm going to land my green wire, which is the ground in with the ground bar. The red, which is a load wire, I'm going to land over here. And it can be either lug, this lug, or this lug. The black will be in the line side or the load side so we have our loads which are these wires and then the ground i now have the disconnect wired up and i'm going to replace the cover over the wiring now that you've seen me install the mr cool unit step by step I'm going to give you a little review on the installation process. I can't give you a longevity review because clearly I just installed this thing today. But as of right now, when it comes to the installation, I'm going to give you my true feelings. And before we get ahead of ourselves, just as a recap, this is the DIY E-Star Series. And it's the fourth generation do-it-yourself heat pump air conditioner. And we got our inside unit, which is the air handler which is a 18 sear rating so keep that in mind when i give you my installation review because if you're installing multiple inside units like mr cool offers yes you can get units where you can hook multiple inside units to the condenser so you'd have one condenser on the outside then multiple inside units located around your building so i've seen some that even had four of them going into a unit like this but it's a clearly a different model to where you'd have more line set ports to connect into. But when it comes to installing the one you see me do, honestly, my mind is blown on how easy that was to install. I've seen many splits installed around different buildings in my area, and I did not have a clue that you can install them yourself and let alone how easy it was to actually install it. I mean, if, after watching the video, I'm sure you can get a good idea that it wasn't very difficult. So with that being said, every situation is going to be different. So if you're going to install this into a two-story building, if you have the inside air handler in the upper story, and then you're going clear down to the bottom, you're going to have more work involved and whatnot. So when it comes to installation, yes, this was a very easy process. And as far as I can tell, the quality of the units seem to be very good. I have no complaints, very quiet. Um, they look good, all that type of thing. So you won't have any issues with the appearance of the unit inside of your house or even on the outside of the house. And especially if you do that line set cover, that just puts the icing on the cake. 
If you would like to see how I wired this whole garage, check out this video. It'll help you out.